Okay, so another week uh, has gone by in the semester. This is uh, the week in review. This past week, uh, I went over um, the cloud compiler example for uh, showing you how to write code, how to test that code, and how to change the replit file in the cloud compiler to uh, run your test case, and then how to know what com <coughs> commands to put in the in the run command. And then after we run the test case, and I showed you all how to run the program itself. And again, uh, it's a matter of changing uh, two commands, and uh, I won't go into the details. Then I briefly went over a GitHub overview, just to make sure that students understand why uh, we are using GitHub in this class. And then I uh, <clears throat> hit the high level points of uh, <clears throat> the history, how you can view the history, and then how you can view uh, changes that you've made uh, for homeworks or examples or, or whatever changes you're making to GitHub. You can get a representation of what your file looked like before the change and then how it was after the change. And that's how uh, GitHub ha helps us track uh, source code changes. <clears throat> I also talked about CMake and how it is the glue behind the scenes that, that allows us to uh, use Visual Studio Code and the cloud compiler uh, with minimal uh, command uh, configuration. So GitHub uh, does a lot that for us behind the scenes. Um, then we uh, talked about this review process, which is very important. So there's the software development life cycle in programming. Um, we focus, so there's uh, requirements, I'll just RQ development, test, and uh, those are, this is what we're focusing, focusing on, on dev. Why? Because this is a programming class. So we uh, write code and then we test the code. If our code fails, then we have to make sure we verify our test case to make sure we uh, set up the test case correctly. If that's correct, then we can look at our code to find any issues that our code may have. Once our, uh, once our code is green, then we can move on to the next step, which is to write code in the main program. And uh, the importance of this is we're always shooting for high quality code. Uh, we went and we did one example for input, uh, which was create a simple function that took two parameters, units and, and rate. And then uh, in our main, after we tested this function, we uh, went over an example that showed you how to use the CN object or character in to capture data from the keyboard. And then we used the Cout object to display the results uh, <clears throat> of our function call, but also to prompt the user for the units and, and the rate. Okay. In, we also went into the foundation and the basics of C++. So we went into decimals and we showed how uh, working with decimals can be tricky. So we had an example for that. And then we talked about the, the auto keyword. So this auto keyword allows us to um, let C++ uh, figure out what data type we're using depending on what values we assign to to our variables. Oops. Let me come back here. And uh, also, we are getting an idea of how variables uh, are in memory. So let me see here. Maybe this one. So for example, if we use the keyword auto variable name num and the value 10, so auto num is a 10, right? Auto does that behind the scenes. So in the stack memory, this is how this number 10 would be represented. And we uh, had this uh, overview. Also, we uh, went through the same exercise with characters, right? So we were introduced to characters. So the letter J is represented by the number 74 in binary. And it's an 8-bit. So 
zero one zero zero is sixty four and one zero one zero is ten so that's a seventy four so that's this is how a character is represented in a memory diagram for c plus plus and then we looked at the same thing for a string object and one thing about the string object is notice that the heap memory or the free store comes into play and that's where the values for the string are stored and the stack holds the address of the letter j and that's where um, the contents of the string name begins there is complicated logic behind the scenes uh, that makes this all happen that we uh, at the moment don't have to worry about okay there's also an assignment uh, that is due for you all today so hopefully you all are are doing okay with that one now readings for uh topics that we're covering early next week chapter three and that goes into a deep dive for c plus plus data type so i strongly recommend you you read the chapter right if you have the gaddis uh, 9th or 10th edition then read chapter 3.2 to 3.1 if you're using um, the free book uh, fundamentals of c plus plus you can follow this link and read chapter four we will also get into uh, conditional structures so take a look at chapter four in gaddis and chapter five in the free book um, yep okay and for this coming week's homework um, you get to practice more with the process that we work with and you'll be writing a function to create a program that produces a, a restaurant receipt all right so we're writing a program that displays a receipt with meal amount sales tax tip and total amount the meal amount and tip percentage uh, will be captured from keyboard entry right and, and for this assignment we assume the tax rate is 6.75 percent so remember, you, you have to be careful when you're working with doubles or decimals and, and integers. So keep uh, this in mind. Uh, in the next class, I will talk about the gotchas that will help you for this uh, assignment. Okay, That is uh, working with integers and decimals. So uh, we are trying to make our code testable. And we are going to break down our program into two functions, get sales tax amount and get tip amount. And this return uh, double data type. Um, okay, we can skip this piece. Oh, yeah, we can go here. So the sales tax amount has one double parameter, meal amount. And that function, and then the second one, uh, Okay, in the function code, declare a double tax rate parameter with uh, value 6.75 and return the product of meal amount and tax rate. And I will have to clarify this. Okay, so I've clarified this. So make sure you declare a const double tax variable with value 6.5. Again, I will talk about this const variable in the next lecture so that uh, it all becomes clear to you all and the function simply return the product of meal amount and tax rate for function uh, get tip amount has two parameters meal amount and tip rate and it returns the product of meal amount and tip rate okay so make sure uh, that you open visual studio and do a pull right so i've talked about that in class so please make sure you do that always as always uh, write your function prototypes in the header file so for this assignment you will use the homework uh, folder and again this is just here as a guide this function is as a guide for you right here write your function signature and the cpp write your function code uh, jump to test homework variables test and uh, write your test case here notice i've already included variables.h for you and i also have examples for you to uh, follow and understand how to uh, test code 
after your uh, test case is successful, then you can come here to the main piece of your program and you know, use the sin object to capture data from the keyboard for uh, uh, assign uh, for the variables, right? So Milama. And this is actually good, so you all can get practice uh, with uh, creating interactive programs. Uh, so make sure that you use the, C the CN object for this. And uh, I walk through step by step uh, what you have to do, and then you produce a receipt, something like this, right? Uh, for now, I'm not worried about the formatting of the numbers, so you, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So again, uh, for next week, uh, please uh, read the recommended readings and uh, get ready for some more learning. Thank you.